it's that time of year once again. My goodness, does it come around quickly. Welcome everybody to my predictions for the Formula One 2024 World Championship. And I tell you what, this year I'm feeling good. I reckon I've got these spot on this time around. And don't you worry, we're not just doing your bog standard top 20 drivers today. Oh no, we've got some brand new prediction styles for 2024. So strap on in, get ready to put your predictions in the comment section down below. But we've got some categories to get through. So welcome back to Racing Reviews for the 2024 season. And today we need to decide which race in the 2024 season is going to be the spiciest race? Which team is going to rack up the biggest build, causing the most damage, the biggest surprise? Who's going to be packing their bags at the end of the year? New kids on the block and the golden driver. We're starting off, though, with the spiciest of races. Which race is going to cause heads to turn this year? And I've gone with this race. Do you recognise that circuit? Some of you newer fans might not, but this is Shanghai. China returns to the calendar for the first time since 2019. It's a circuit that has given us some absolute bangers. I'm thinking Danny Rick's 2018. I'm thinking 2012. But it's nice to have a new circuit or a returning circuit back. So I have gone for Shanghai. The biggest bill. Which team is going to spend the most money this year? Surprisingly, I've gone with Aston Martin. Yeah, I know. They've got Fernando Alonso, who is an absolute demon and will be gunning for that Mercedes seat this year. No doubt about it. But Lance Stroll last year had a difficult season. And I just looked up and down the grid this year. Even Logie Sarge, who, in all fairness to him, managed to, across the year, get better and better and better. And as each race went on, though when we got to that, Japan struggled. Actually, I think he's going to have a step up this year. So Aston, unfortunately for me, I think Stroll's going to cause them a few headaches this year. Biggest surprise. Really tricky one to decide because for a surprise to be good, it needs to be surprising. So I have gone with this man. Yeah, hopefully that's a surprise for you. I've gone with Nico Hulkenberg. Now, we all know if you've been a fan of the channel for a while, I've got a soft spot for Haas ever since my Roman Grosjean fanboy days. And I think the Hulk had a very strong year last year, was incredible in qualifying and in the race, just didn't have a car to really be able to show his potential. He's getting on now. But with the amount of big seats available for next year, with the likes of Audi coming in, they maybe want a German driver, Mercedes, that seat, they might want a German driver, Red Bull potentially, it's a stretch. It's his last chance to really go for a big seat. So Hulkenberg, if he can continue what he did last year, it's going to be my surprise of the season. Packing their bags then. Which drivers are going to be gone at the end of the year? First up, I've gone Sergio Perez. I think he'll stay in Formula One, but I'm not sure. I just don't believe Red Bull are going to keep him on for next year. Kevin Magnussen, likewise. I don't see another team picking him up next year. I think this is K-Mag's last run in Haas and in Formula One. Same with Joe Guanyu. It's a tricky car to be driving that state car this year but I think with Sainz on their radar and a few other drivers Joe will make way and finally Logie Sarge I think he'll have a step up this year but not enough for Williams to keep him for 2025 and that means there's going to be some new kids on the block some rookies something that we haven't had this year starting with this man Ollie Behrman really impressed in F2 last year was a rookie made a few rookie mistakes but I think will be in that title hunt this year this man won't be but I see him making it to F1 replacing Joe this year's Formula 2 champ Teo Porcher I think will be making his debut next season and finally someone who I've spoke about lots already this pre-season he's got a lot of pressure on his shoulders but Kimi Antonelli I think will be on the grid next year my golden driver before we jump into our top 10 in the driver's standings this isn't the world champion but this is someone who i believe is the driver of the year he's from mclaren it's gonna be lando norris what an incredible year he had last year 
a big step up from Lando. His first year in charge of the team, really, being that team leader, showing Osberger Piastri the ropes, really knuckling down, I think is a good way of putting it. And though those early races weren't great in that McLaren car, what a turnaround at Silverstone for the British Grand Prix, leading the early stages of that race and went on an incredible run, top five in the driver's standings, an incredible year for Norris. And I think this year will be even better. And finally, my top 10 drivers in the standings. We can go reverse order, starting in 10th place, working towards that P1, who's gonna be this year's world champion. It's tricky to do this, but with testing out the way, I think I've got a better picture. And in P10, I've gone Daniel Ricciardo. It's a bold one. And I think of all the top 10, this is the most outlandish. But that V-carb looked really good in pre-season testing. I think a big result from Ricky could get him in the top 10. Ninth, I've gone Alonso. And he is in front of Stroll, don't you worry. I think they're going to be good again, but not challenging your Mercedes, McLarens, Ferraris, and your Red Bull cars. Eighth place, Carlos Sainz. Ferrari look quick, but we know what Ferrari are like. We know their strategies. We know their reliability. And Sainz, who's on his way out at the end of the year, I think will be pushed aside and will finish the year in eighth place. Seventh. I've got Oscar Piastri. This will be a step up from last year, and I think he'll be able to achieve that. So many people forget he was just a rookie last year, and he was so impressive. I just can't put him any higher than seventh. I think he'll be better, but I can't put him higher when you've got the likes of George Russell. He's gone into sixth place for me, and I just have not got a good feeling about Mercedes this year. Testing went okay not Stella, and so just in front of George Russell is Lewis Hamilton, which feels like a crime to put Lewis down in fifth place, but I'm just not feeling it from Mercedes this year. It just doesn't look like that package is all together. They've got big changes coming next year with driver lineups, so fifth and sixth for the Merc, with Perez nestled in in P4. Is that a bit low? Is that a bit high? I think that Red Bull just looks too good to not put him in the top four, and maybe I've put him slightly low, but I've got such a good feeling about Charles Leclerc in that third place. I think he's going to get a couple of wins under his belt this year. He is going to have a real year to cement himself as Ferrari number one just before Lewis Hamilton arrives in the team. Second, I've gone for Lando Norris, my golden driver heading into this season. What a year he had last year. And I think if McLaren can just get a few upgrades, early doors on that car, if he can continue where he left off last year, he'll be fine. And there's no doubt, no doubt that Max Verstappen will be world champion. Hopefully Norris Leclerc, Hamilton, Piastri Russell can give him a run for his money. But I think Max has got it well and truly locked down in 2024. And there you have it my very quick run through of my 2024 predictions. Spiciest race, I've gone for Shanghai. Biggest bill, Aston Martin. My biggest surprise, my best surprise, Nico Hülkenberg. Perez, Joe, Sargent and Magnussen, I'm predicting to pack their bags with Paul Scher, Behrman and Antonelli joining the grid in 2025. My golden driver is Lando Norris and my world champion is Max Verstappen. Let me know your predictions in the comments section down below. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.